Hello, my name is Peter Raymer, and today we're going to talk about D365 SysOperation Framework Validation on Parameters. So in a previous video, I talked about how to add parameters. We've talked about how to add default values to parameters. Um, and parameters really give the user a lot of flexibility. They can specify different data that they want to filter on when processing this batch job. Um, but it can also cause problems if the data is too open-ended. Perhaps um, the data they specified is isn't valid for them to run this batch job on. So we can actually add validation to ensure that the parameters they set, whether it's a string or um, a no yes checkbox or a date control or an in integer is a valid date for um, the intended purpose of this batch job. So in this example, we're going to actually look at a from date and to date and it's very common for a from and to date that you validate that the to date doesn't um, specify a date that's before the from date so for instance if i were to set this from date to a current date and then um, the to date to a value several months in the past this doesn't really make sense functionally and so what we can do is we can add validation that occurs when the user clicks OK um, to check those values, make sure that they're populated, make sure that one's not greater than the other, and then indicate to the user what the problem is. So this is really useful. Let's look at how that's done behind the scenes. Um, as a reminder, all SysOperation Framework batch jobs really need a contract class, a service class, and a controller class. And so I've got <clears throat> a video that explains how to create these three classes. And so I recommend you follow that video if you're creating the SysOperation Framework um, job for the first time. After you've created those three classes, we wanna go back to our contract class and I'll explain how you can add validation to the parameters there. The way we do that is with just a couple different steps. The first step is we need to add the word implements and then sysoperation validatable onto the end of our class declaration. If you're not setting a default value, you don't need this sys operation initializable, but I thought I'd show you how you can add both of these at once if you have um, both those needs. But you just need implements, sys operation validatable. What that is gonna do is it's gonna cause the system to call the validate method, which you must have. If you don't have, you'll get a compile error but then you need to add a method um, with this definition, public Boolean validate. Once you've added this method, if this method returns a false value, then the form, this dialog form is not going to close when the user clicks OK. And then we want to make sure that there's some info message that indicates why. So in this case, I've added some validation to check to see that a from date was specified and that a to date was also specified and that the uh, from date is actually a group or if the from date is greater than the to date, then I'm gonna print out an error message and say that's not valid. The from date cannot be greater than the to date. So that's really it, is that's how I can add um, validation on the contract class to check different parameter values. I'm using the parameter values that I've added to this contract class right here, from date to date. And then you can see how I've added these parameters just here. In this case, all I needed is a data member attribute to cause this parameter to show on the front. There is actually a second way that we can add validation as well. And in this second way, we actually add it to the controller class. So if I go over to the controller class, I can actually just implement a method called protected Boolean validate. So it's named the same thing, but it just happens to be on the controller class. 
and I can put similar code here if I want or the same code um, to do validation. I wouldn't want to put validation in both places, but I'm showing you here how it's done. First, I need to declare a variable of type contract class. So my contract class is called RSM tut, short for tutorial sys operations contract. Then I can use this method called this dot get data contract object to get the data contract. Then I can call the par method since I can't access the variables directly on it since they're private. I want to use the par methods. This will get out the variable and I can do those same types of checks um, by reading those values out of the contract class. And then same deal if this method returns a false value, it will not allow the user to proceed and run the batch job. So validation is really important. It's to make sure that the user can't specify parameters that would cause um, issues or don't apply to this batch job. We want that information known right up front so the user can correct the issue, enter in valid parameters, um, and then run the batch job. Parameters are really helpful. They provide a lot of flexibility to the user, um, allowing them to process different kinds of data, but uh, using validation as well as lookups, we can ensure that the user is selecting only the data that makes sense for this particular batch job. Okay, hopefully you've learned how to do validation on SysOperation Framework batch jobs. Um, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you like the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.